Okay, so getting back into our coverage over Spawn for Spawn Sundays, we do pick up with Spawn number 80, 81, and 82. Now, with this next three-part story arc we're going to cover, it kind of picks up where our last video left off at. Now, when it came to our last video, we just got word that Sam's new girlfriend, Sarah Frost, is a serial killer. Because at first, we got word that somebody was going around killing off people who were homeless sex workers and the list goes on people who may be in need when it comes to getting out of those different kinds of situations the problem was though they had no idea at first who was the killer now after a few days of trying to figure it out they all came together sam twitch and spawn to find out it was sarah frost now the problem was though sarah frost at first was a new love interest for sam we believe that maybe he will might finally have somebody to be with to only realize that she is a serial killer and to make things worse she ran a community center where she goes out of her way to help people out in need the problem was though the five victims did go to her center except they declined her offer and so it seems like she killed those people all because they had declined her offer and so once you have Sam realize his new girlfriend is the new serial killer in the city is sam saying okay i have to tell spawn what i just learned and you have spawn say hey man sorry i have to go ahead and kill off your girlfriend because she is the serial killer going around killing off people left and right and so you have Spawn pay her a visit. Now, when he does, his main goal is to basically torture her because she is a serial killer. She is going around killing golf people left and right if they had declined her offer when it came to her helping them. And so what Spawn does, he used his abilities to control the bugs to kind of not kind of, to really torture her because we can tell that she does have a fear of bugs, but the bugs just don't stop coming. And so even though she is scratching and smacking herself to kill the bugs, throw them away, more and more bugs continue to show up all over her body. And the only thing she can do is just to continue to freak out because this is Spawn torturing her for all the crimes that she has committed. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, there's more to her story, but unfortunately, we're not going to know more about her story until really the tail end of this chapter. Now, I kind of want to take a quick break when it comes to Spawn torturing Sarah. And the reason why, because I want to focus more on Sam and Twitch for a brief moment. And remember, when it comes to Sam and Twitch, they used to be two police officers who got fired because they were trying to bring down their boss, who was corrupt. Now, after getting fired, they became private investigators. Now, the thing was, they were confronted by Cogli Astro, who told them that these two characters are are going to be very important when it comes to spawn stopping the war between heaven and hell but unfortunately we have no idea what he meant by that either way in our last video twitch got shot in the head and he only survived thanks to spawn and so after spawn had saved twitch life spawn said you guys owe me one you guys are going to work for me because i basically saved twitch life and so unfortunately they are working with spawn or really for spawn either way you can tell there's something bothering twitch but the problem is we have no idea what's bothering him but getting back over to Spawn torturing Sarah, I do want to tell you that this is Spawn making sure that she gets what she deserves, that she would not get a quick death because again, she killed off all those innocent people who were technically out in the world who just may need some help to get out of their situations like being homeless or being a sex worker. Either way, when it comes to Spawn, he's all like, you killed all those innocent people. Now, it was the last victim that really did bother spawn a lot and the reason why it was a child now even though she was a teenager that's still a child and the thing is 
she was killed off by Sarah. So her spawn is all like, no, you deserve this. You got mad at her because she declined your offer when it came to getting some help. And so you killed her. And that really bothers me a lot. Now, like I said earlier, the way spawn is torturing her is just sending waves of bugs over and over again and climbing just all over Sarah's body. And she's freaking out. She's scratching. She's smacking. But it gets worse. She grabs bug spray and she begins to spray herself with bug spray over and over and over again. And she goes through so many cans. This is Spawn saying, yes, go ahead and kill yourself with that bug spray. Spray yourself in the face. Spray yourself on your arm, your leg, wherever. Just continue to spray yourself. But the bugs, they are going to continue to come because I control them. I want you to beg for death. I want you to basically die for what you did. But picking up 45 minutes later, we do pick up with Sam and Twitch arriving at Sarah's apartment. Now, when they do arrive, they arrive with a team of police officers. Now, here's the thing, because we have to remember, Sam and Twitch are private investigators. They were working alongside with the NYPD when it came to this case. Who is a serial killer going around killing off homeless people and sex workers? And so you had Sam and Twitch tell the NYPD it was Sarah and so when they do arrive you have the police officers tell our heroes yeah you guys were right you are amazing we found files that she had kept on every single victim every single person that she had killed off that tells us that she was the killer you guys are heroes and they get all the credit now Here's the thing, because before you had Sam and Twitch leave, you had Sam look at the neck of Sarah to find a mark. Now, we saw this mark in our last video. It's going to be very important here in a moment, but when it comes to Sam, he's all like, dang, she has this mark. Now, when Sam and Twitch leave the apartment building, when they get outside, well, they are confronted by the media because they got reports that Sam and Twitch were the ones who had solved the case and so now these two guys are becoming heroes in the city except even though our heroes were able to get the love and respect they deserve they're about to lose all of that right now because as soon as they get back to their office and they're all happy about the idea they're on the front page of today's paper they realize they have a package the problem is though inside that package is a head and they're kind of wondering what in the world is going on but then twitch points to the wall and when he does he sees a message that was left behind in blood but signed by billy now you already know who billy is it's billy kincaid the child serial killer that spawn had killed all the way back in spawn number five but let's not forget because when it came to billy kincaid he was thrown in jail originally for being a child serial killer but he got out on good behavior either way as soon as he got out he continued his behavior of going after children and so it was sam and twitch trying to bring him down but unfortunately they couldn't do that because spawn stepped in and killed off billy kincaid but the thing was it was sam and twitch who had originally locked up kincaid the first time and so it seems like he's back to get revenge against spawn but also Sam and Twitch as well. The return of the child serial killer. Now, when we jump into the next chapter, we're going to focus on Mark Lucas at first. He's going to play a very important role about the idea of the return of Billy Kincaid because we do pick up with Mark just being a normal kid. The problem was, though, he grabbed his dad's gun. Now, at first, I believe that he was going to commit suicide, but we don't see that. Instead, what he does, he goes with his family to church on Sunday. And while you have the pastor out there preaching, well, that is when you have Mark pull out the gun and shoot the pastor right in the head, 
killing the pastor in front of his family and all the other church members. Now, the reason why I say he's very important about the idea of the return of Billy Kincaid is because we see Billy Spirit right now standing behind Mark. Nobody else can see the spirit, but we already know that somehow Billy made Mark kill off that preacher. But then we jump over to Sam and Twitch. Now, when we do, it's our two characters realizing that there is a possibility that Billy had came back to life. Now, the only reason why they're believing this is because, well, Al Simmons spawned. Cogley Astro told Sam and Twitch the actual origin of Al Simmons. And so they know that he was somebody who died five years ago and came back to life thanks to Malbogia. And so there is a possibility that Billy Kincaid was given the chance to come back to life in a different kind of way. Now, really, it's more Twitch believing that. When it comes to Sam, He's kind of like, mm, I don't want to believe that. But deep down, you know that he does believe it. Now, while you have our two characters talking to one another, they also feel bad about the idea that they're going to lose all the love they're getting right now from the city. Because right now, the city is saying, you guys are heroes. You solved the case. But now there's a possibility that Sarah was actually innocent and somebody else, Billy Kincaid, was the reason why she was labeled as a killer, that she was framed as a killer. But again, they have no idea if Billy is alive or if Billy was the reason why Sarah was framed. Now, we already know that Billy is alive, but we have no idea if Billy somehow framed Sarah. But out of nowhere, we are then reminded of Ethan Crone. Now, Ethan Crone is a newer character. He really only appeared in our last video, and that is it. And the only thing we truly know about Ethan by this point is that he is a writer, that he is currently working on a book, a nice big book that could possibly sell very well. Now, here's the thing, because he is currently meeting up with his agent. And when it comes to his agent, she is wondering, hey, what do you have in mind for your next book? And he says his book is going to be about Spawn and his goal is to learn more about Spawn because when it comes to Ethan, his whole idea is to write books about urban myth. And right now what he's hearing in the city is that there's some hell spawn out there known as spawn going around killing golf people but also trying to protect the city and so it's him saying i'm trying to gather more information and once i do that is going to be my next book now when we do pick up with spawn we see him meeting up with Kali astro now when it comes to Kali astro this is the moment where we learn about the mark we saw on Sarah's neck and kind of find out the mark technically means that she was possessed by a demon. Now, that is actually very huge because we kind of find out if a demon does possess that person and makes that person commit crimes, that person is still at fault for their crimes. So if you are possessed by a demon, you kill off, let's say your neighbor, well, even though you were possessed by a demon, you're still at fault, which means you are going to hell. You're not going to heaven because you committed murder. And so when it came to Sarah Frost, she was actually innocent. She was being controlled most likely by Billy Kincaid. And so he used her as a way to kill off different people, but to also give Malbogia another soul for use in his army. And so now Spawn realized that he just messed up, but at the same time, now him and Kali Astro, they have no idea how they're going to stop Billy Kincaid. But when we shift our focus over to Mark, this is where we see why Mark was so important for this chapter. Because you have Mark on the run. You know, people are looking for him because he killed the pastor of the church. He dipped out. No one can find him, but he goes back to the church. And when he does, it's kind of like him saying, I can't believe I pulled the trigger. I cannot believe I killed the pastor. Like, it's hard for him to realize that his life is ruined. But again, it's him saying, like, it wasn't him. It was something else controlling him. 
And we saw earlier, it was Billy Kincaid that was controlling Mark. Either way, you have Mark commit suicide. And we already know what's next for his soul. His soul is going to hell because, again, he killed the pastor. Even though he was being controlled, he is going to be the one at fault for the crime. And right after he kills off himself, well, you see Billy Kincaid happy about the idea that Mark is dead. But then we have to jump over to Spawn. And when we do, it's really more Spawn realizing that there is a demon going around possessing people and having people kill off people as a way to build up the army for Malbogia. Is Spawn wondering what in the world can he do to stop this madness? Except that is the moment he learns who it was who was going around possessing people. He comes to find out it was no other than Billy Kincaid. He confronts Spawn, and now it's time for these two to have a conversation. And so when we jump into the final chapter, well, we pick up with Spawn trying to attack Billy because he now knows that Billy is alive again, that Billy has returned. The problem is, though, Spawn is having a hard time coming after Billy because, one, Billy is a ghost, but Billy is way more powerful, it seems like, than Spawn is because Billy is able to stop Spawn in his tracks, but also he is able to wrap the chains of Spawn around Spawn to make sure Spawn Spawn cannot attack him. It kind of shows how powerful Billy has become thanks to the upgrade that he has gotten from Malbogia. Oh, that right there is also important because you have uh, Billy say that Malbogia gave him this ability to go around and possess people so that Billy can help build up the army of hell when it comes time for the big war between heaven and hell. And so for Billy, he's telling Spawn, dude, listen, you may have killed me off a while back, but I am loving this new position and the thing is there's nothing that you can do that can actually stop me so i'm going to leave and continue what i was doing before i came here to talk to you and so we do pick up with spawn being confronted by twitch now when he is confronted by twitch it's really more twitch trying to tell spawn that he got a message that was left behind by billy kincaid but also it's twitch saying hey I'm trying to build some kind of friendship with you. And the reason why he wants to build up this friendship because Twitch understands what Spawn is going through. Now, Twitch has not truly died yet. Twitch was not turned to a hell spawn. Is Twitch saying, I know what it's like to lose your wife. Now, Twitch has not lost his wife, but he feels like he is losing his wife now let me explain because when it comes to spawn remember he died five years ago to only come back to life to not have the ability to be with his wife but to find out that his ex-wife wanda had moved on and got married to his best friend terry for twitch is more of because he's always away working always trying to provide for his wife and his children that he feels like sooner or later She's going to leave him. And so he feels like he's losing his wife. And so once he explained things to Spawn, Spawn realized what Twitch is trying to do to build a bond. Because these are two men who love their wives or ex-wives so much and they'll do anything for them. But unfortunately, their lies, their work lies are getting in the way. Now, with that being said, once you have Twitch tell Spawn, I believe that Billy Kincaid has returned, it's Spawn saying, I am going to take care of it. Like, give me some time, I'll take care of Billy. The problem is, I don't know how I'm going to do that because he came back, he's more powerful, and honestly, I can't even touch him. Now we do pick up with Helen, and I remember Helen is the wife of Twitch, but we see her and one of their kids leaving the museum. Now when they do leave, it gets into the idea of the child wondering where is his father? Why is Twitch always working late? And we know why, to provide for his 
family. But when it comes to Helen, she tells her child that, but you can tell by her facial expression that she's kind of tired about the idea of Twitch working late, but at the same time, she understands why he has to do it, to provide for their family. Now, unfortunately, that is the moment where they get on a subway train, but the subway train gets taken control of by a gunsman who believes that he is God. And so you now have a madman with a gun on a train just going crazy saying he is God and it's time for people to pay. Now, when it comes to this actual scene right here, it does take up a few pages of this book, but it's really more about the idea of just this gunsman going crazy, believes he is God, and it gets to the point where he actually gives Helen an ultimatum saying, listen, if you cut off your child's ear, I will let both of you live. Now we already know, as Helen, the mom here, she is not going to harm her child, but what she is going to do is protect her child from this man. And so even though this man said, if you don't cut off your child's ear, I'm going to shoot you both. It's her goal trying to make sure that one, she is shot first and the possibility that her child will survive or at least turn his head away so that he will not see what's coming. Either way, they're saved by Spawn. Now, Spawn knows right off the bat that Billy Kincaid is currently possessing this gunsman. And you have Spawn say, get the you-know-what out of there, but the guy dies. Now, because he just shot someone earlier and possibly killed someone earlier, his soul is on his way down to hell. And so this guy is just another example of what Billy is doing right now in New York. Going around, possessing people, have them commit crimes, and once they do die, their souls go into hell. Now, Spawn does see Billy, and we see the four people that Billy so far had messed with. Mark, Sarah, this gunsman, and the other guy came from our last video. The question is now, where is Billy gonna go next? And that's the scary part, because for the ending of today's video, we actually see Billy go over to Granny Blake's house. Now, let's not forget, Granny Blake is the grandmother of Wanda Blake, Spawn's ex-wife. And so, we now know that when it comes to Billy, his goal is to possess her next. Now, let's not forget here, she is blind, but she can see spirits, and she sees Billy and she says go away but Billy is like nah I'm not going anywhere because we can tell his goal is to possess her and once he's done with granny because this man is a child serial killer his next goal is to go after Cyan the daughter of Wanda and Terry. And this is where we are going to end today's comic book video. So please leave me a like down below and subscribe. But guys, see y'all next time. Later.